I believe the tribulation began in 2020 and will run until 2027. This period correlates well with the parable of the fig tree. Thank you for tuning in as we delve into this mystery found in Matthew 24. In this parable, Jesus presents the fig tree as a sign, indicating that when it blossoms, his return is imminent. He asserts that the generation witnessing this will not perish before his return. The narrative starts at verse 29, depicting cosmic upheaval darkening sun, moon withholding its light, falling stars, and the shaking powers of heaven. Following these signs, the Son of Man will manifest in the sky, and all tribes on earth will lament as they see him arrive on the clouds with great power and glory. He will dispatch his angels with a resounding trumpet call to gather the elect from every corner of heaven. The lesson of the fig tree is simple. Just as tender twigs and unfurling leaves signal summer's approach, these cosmic signs signify that his return is imminent, right at the doorstep. Truly, this generation will witness all these events unfold. So, what does the budding fig tree symbolize? I argue it represents Israel's return, which I will discuss further. But first, what defines a generation? When does this prophetic window close? The reestablishment of Israel on May 14, 1948, by Ben Gurion, might seem a modern miracle or merely a political act. Yet, Isaiah 66, 8 challenges us with a rhetorical question about a nation born in a day, a phenomenon unheard of. Until modern times when nations began to be established by decree rather than conquest. Another pivotal moment for Israel was June 7, 1967, during the Six-Day War, when Israel reclaimed East Jerusalem and the Temple Mount, restoring what was lost in 1948. Despite declaring statehood, Israel faced immediate invasion, leading to an armistice that left Jerusalem divided, suggesting a nation only half restored. As for the length of a generation, Scripture offers multiple possibilities. In Joshua 5-6, the Israelites wandered for forty years until those who had rebelled had perished. Psalm 90, 10 suggests a lifespan of seventy to eighty years, while Genesis 6, 3 mentions one hundred and twenty years. As a limit for human longevity, a statistic that holds true today with none of the 8 billion people on earth exceeding this age. Thus, whether a generation spans 40, 70, 80, or 120 years, each provides a frame to consider. The initial test could be 40 years. Did Jesus imply that the generation from 1948 or 1967 would not perish? Before witnessing these events, those timelines have already surpassed 1988 and 2007, respectively. So, it definitely didn't mean just 40 years. Some might argue about the period from 30 to 33 AD, when Jesus was crucified, to 70 AD, which spans approximately 37 to 40 years. Could this time frame have referred to the destruction of Jerusalem? Was the fulfillment of this generation, as all the events Jesus mentioned, took place then? It cannot be because the verses I previously discussed, describing Jesus returning in power and glory and gathering the elect, did not occur. While the destruction of Jerusalem happened, not all parts of the prophecy were fulfilled. Therefore, the prophecy Jesus gave is a composite, one that includes some earlier events, but certainly not the later ones we've discussed. Ultimately, we're looking for a repeat of 70 AD in the last days, as described in Revelation 19 and Ezekiel 38 and 39, where Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Israel, which we believe is represented by the fig tree, was still in leaf when Jesus spoke. It had not yet budded or withered into a long winter. In Matthew 21:19, there's an account where Jesus, after noticing a fig tree by the road, found nothing on it except leaves. He declared that it would never bear fruit again, and the fig tree withered immediately. This symbolizes what would happen to Israel. It was in leaf. It should have had fruit, but it didn't. Some might point out, as in Mark 11:13, that it wasn't the season for figs. However, it's important to note that fig trees bear an early crop when the first leaves appear. So, although it wasn't the main season, there should have been early figs. This indicates that Jesus was cursing the fig tree as a representation of Israel's rejection of their Messiah. Exactly as he prophesied in Matthew 23:38 and in Luke 19:43, 44. He foretold the days when enemies would besiege and destroy Jerusalem because they did not recognize their time of visitation. 
From that point, within 40 years, Israel was no longer a country. The temple was destroyed, and the Jews were scattered a judgment from God. 4. As Amos 3, 6 suggests, when disaster strikes a city, has not the Lord caused it? It underscores that God is sovereign over all events, good and bad, and these occur due to sin, wickedness, and rebellion against God. After 1,878 years, when Israel became a nation again in 1948, it was as if the fig tree had budded after a long winter, fulfilling prophecy. Isaiah 11.11 prophesied that God would recover His people a second time, signaling God's enduring plan for Israel. The first regathering occurred during Ezra and Nehemiah's time when the temple was rebuilt between 516 and 409 B.C. The phrase, a second time, indicates that we are now witnessing this second regathering, heralding the time for our Messiah to return. Now, let's calculate using durations like 60, 70, 80, and 120 years, looking at significant dates. Adding 60 years to 1948 brings us to 2008, which has passed, but adding 60 years to 1967 brings us to 2027, potentially a critical end time. Considering 70 to 80 years from 1948, we reach 2018 to 2028. The tribulation, I believe, started in 2020 and will run until 2027, fitting the timeline of the fig tree parable. This is not the only possible interpretation, but it aligns with several prophetic indicators. Some speculate on dates like 2030 or 2033 and beyond, but observing the signs, especially from 1967, suggests looking at years up to 2087 for this understanding of a generation. These prophecies are puzzles, not straightforward instructions. We must keep an open mind and remain vigilant Understanding that nothing happens by accident, God orchestrates everything, revealing His plans piece by piece. Thank you for